so uh, just done 30 minutes on the bike didn't uh, didn't bother uh, recording it um wasn't really going to record much today but uh, you know i thought i would anyway so yeah just doing arms today so just a little workout so uh, i suppose it's episode uh 94 of the road to fitness so uh yeah just cracking away again i'm not sad enough i want to record every minute of every workout and uh, try and convince everyone that i'm some athlete or anything like that uh no, just training just keeping the fat down heading into winter trying to stay uh healthy and strong keep uh, any bugs or uh, <laughs> or illnesses away uh yeah so just uh pumping up the guns and uh watching some some van life here so uh yeah what am i watching now winter survival alone in the wilderness living the van life yeah it's a uh, yeah, people ask me what I listen to, what music I listen to when I'm training. I don't. I just watch videos on on YouTube, usually van life stuff or something like that. So yeah, uh, Mel's out there cooking up a feast, uh, steak. We're gonna have a bit of steak, and then uh, I'm gonna head off to work. Gonna do a bit more surveillance. Ooh, undercover, covert. Oh, decided to put another five kilograms on the uh, on the easy bar just to do the. Uh, yeah, the uh, concentration curls with the easy bar. So that's now 15 kilograms plus the bar. So again, not record breaking numbers, but I'm not an advanced power lifter, uh, masters athlete. So, uh, <laughs> and I don't pretend to be just a 40 year old, 48 year old dude trying to keep fit and keep the reaper Let's away. my workout. And now I'm gonna see what's happening in the kitchen because coming from the kitchen is incredible. Got some chippies, yeah. Steaks, and we got pep peppercorn sauce. Oh yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Smells amazing. All right, so I'm uh, in position and uh, just set up for a night of surveillance. And uh, how do we do it? Well, let me just show you. I'll put the light on now that no one's around. All right, so just got my little tripod here and that's got just an old camera, um, an old old phone on it, using that as a camera just to record because it's got a timestamp on it. And it's just rec you know, looking out the window there. So that's what we're doing. I've got some, uh, I've got some cake <laughs> and some coffee, and I'm just, uh, yeah, just doing some surveillance, you know. So uh, this is the sort of stuff we do. I've got the police over there as well. So I've got the police there. <laughs> well, they're they're parked there anyway. Um, but yeah, that's what we do. So. Uh, <sighs> Bread and butter work, bread and butter work, bit of surveillance, bit of uh, private detective work. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Anyway, so tonight is the night for uh, Tyson and Jones Jr. I think that's just going to be the biggest shit show ever. You know, these guys are in their 50s. I mean, I know how my performance uh, at judo has has changed from my, from my late 20s to uh to my late 40s <laughs> it's not the same so um yeah i just everyone's getting hyped about tyson oh yeah he looks great he's looking it's a it's gonna be a shit show two 50 year old dudes um just slugging it out they'll be gassed after the first round they really will it's gonna be terrible Everyone's hyped up, thinking it's going to be some, you know, Tyson at his prime. I mean, the guy was a beast when he was younger. He was a monster. Terrifying. But um, this, 50, 53 years old, I mean, it's going to be absolutely just, it's just, I think it's going to be a bit sad and embarrassing, really. I think they're going to be gassed after the first round and then just sort of laying on each other in the corner, no doubt. Anyway, so uh, you guys have a good good evening and uh, I'll speak to you guys 
So I'm just keeping an eye out here. You can tell I shouldn't really have the light on like this, but it's a bit quiet at the minute. But uh, yeah, you have a good evening. I'm going to have a good evening until about, ooh, I don't know, until about 1 o'clock in the morning. I'll get home about 2 o'clock, I think. 2 o'clock, 2 a.m. Uh, yeah, so you guys have a good Saturday night. This is my Saturday night. Coffee, cake, and <laughs> surveillance. All right, see you later. So the morning after the night before. So it's Sunday morning now. I'm just, uh, this is an addendum before I uh, edit the video. I think I, I thought I'd record this now. And um, I just watched the, uh, the uh, Tyson Jones fight. And i got to say, I was impressed. Uh, not impressed by, well, yeah, impressed by the whole thing, actually. I was going to say not impressed by, uh, you know, the skill. But no, the skill was there. Um, the pace was there. These guys are in their 50s. You know, bear in mind they are elite level fighters, boxers. Uh, these guys are in their 50s. And they really did bring it. I personally thought it was just going to be uh, sort of a cash grab uh, you know, a shit show, you know, just get in there, take the money, get out. But uh, Tyson seems to have changed quite a bit. You know, he's much more humble now. Uh, he's doing it for different reasons, which is, uh, you know, the charity thing. He's given all his purse to charity, which is uh, very, very commendable. And um, yeah, it just he just he's back in the in the ring for the love of the game, it seems. And. I was impressed. I was impressed by the pace, the, the level of performance. Uh, they're not as sharp as they were 20 years ago, but who is? <laughs> you know, I'm 48, so I know what I'm talking about. You know, when I was training in my 20s, different world. You know, if I fight people now in their 20s at 48, <laughs> different world. I'm not going to try and bullshit you and say, I'm better than I was in my 20s, like a certain loser. You know, I'm still doing PRs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolute nonsense. Yeah, we peak, we hit, we hit our peak, and then it's a, a steady decline. Yeah, that's life. We don't get stronger, we don't get faster as we get older. Yeah, we get weaker and we get slower, unfortunately. You know, it's life. So uh, that's and and Mike Tyson said it. He said he uh, he took his youth. For granted is what he said. I paraphrase, but he took his youth for granted, and um, and that's a lot. A lot of people do. I was quite aware of my youth when I was younger, and I wanted to really hit it hard and burn out hard. You know, burn it hard, and uh, and I did. I, I had a lot, a lot of good times, and you know, training and you know everything. I achieved so much before I was thirty. You know, it was just a drive in me. And uh, he said he neglected his youth. You know, uh, so that's, um, you know, sometimes you're so focused, you just forget to stop and enjoy the moments, you know. Uh, and I'm guilty of that as well. You know, my the, my 20s and 30s flash past me and I look back at them and go, wow, I had a good time. And I enjoyed it, but I was so focused on the next good moment that, yeah, I wasn't enjoying the moment I was in. So uh, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's something that comes with uh, yeah, age and wisdom. You know, you realise that, that you sometimes squander your youth. But that's it. You can never get it back, you know. So it's good to enjoy your youth when you're young, you know. Um, but yeah, it doesn't come back. You don't get younger. You don't get faster. You don't get stronger. Yeah, you get older, you get weaker, you get you get slower. Yeah, but back to the Tyson uh, Jones fight. I was I was happily entertained and pretty impressed. Yeah, pretty impressed. So uh, great work, and I'm glad it was a draw. Bit of a participation sort of thing, but both of them, you know, they didn't like a draw. They're both good sportsmanships. Uh, they they both showed good sportsmanship and accepted the draw. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, they're competitors, yeah? They're, they're proper, real, driven competitors. And uh, no one likes to draw, you know? So someone likes to win, but that means someone has to lose. But, uh, yeah, it was nice that they got a draw, you know? Um, and at 50-odd, 50, 50, you know, over 50 years old, a combined, a combined 100, 104 
years old <laughs> you know that's a lot of age in there but uh, they both showed up and they bought it you know so i was impressed i honestly thought it was going to be a shit show but what i was even more impressed by was jake paul and nate robinson do you see that <laughs> see that big right hand from um from jake paul knocked him down three four times and then flattened him on the last one absolutely boom face face first into the canvas he was he was gone before he hit the floor yeah he took a few good shots before then good couple of right handers before then but that last one he just face planted into the floor he was out before he uh hit the floor i mean it was uh that was a serious right um and that's it jake paul what is he a youtuber <laughs> i don't know what the other guy does i think he's in music nate nate robinson i think he's music but the guy before was ksi he's a youtuber wasn't he um logan paul you know jake paul's talking about uh fighting conor mcgregor <laughs> i don't think that's gonna happen but he's calling out a lot of people and he's very big on social media at the minute he's blowing up on twitter and all the you know shitter you know all the uh the, the social media and you have to love and hate social media it's good if you make it but bad if you you know if you're just watching it and viewing it and it's a bit of a cesspit isn't it a leftist cesspit you know but this is my point he started out as a youtuber and i've got two points here um this is this is the nature of a real man this is the nature of men i don't mean soy boys and fucking weird you know binary fucking confused all that nonsense i mean just real men yeah if if you're just doing something you know simple like youtubing you're sitting on your ass all day it's very sedentary you know real men need a quest yeah this is why we have stories of quests and all this stuff you know search for the we like these stories yeah quests challenges you know pioneering spirit we like this we like to test ourselves we need a challenge we need a goal these are real male attributes real men they need goals they need something to focus on they need something to conquer yeah they need a battle they need to battle themselves or they battle someone else externally or they battle something like a bloody mountain they need a battle and a challenge this is this is what is in there in real men we need a challenge and if you grow up in in the modern world of you know social media and all that and you decide to become a youtuber and you become very successful at it and you make millions of dollars that's amazing but there's no real manly quest pursuit there's no real challenge yeah there's a challenge of getting a thousand viewers and then a million and ten million you know all that yeah that's good but it doesn't fulfill you as a man this is why people like logan paul and jake paul ksi challenge themselves and they challenge other this is how they fell into boxing yeah because they need something to train for they need a goal to focus on they need a quest and you know in the past we've all had you know we had we've had the gulf war but there was no call up for that yeah vietnam there was a there was a call up you know national service for that world war one world war two there were national call-ups you know calling up civilians yeah we need a battle this is why we always look for bad guys yeah in the in the media we always look for a bad guy someone to to focus on as a bad guy ah oh, that guy needs to go yeah it's just the nature of a man and this is why you find people like logan paul and jake paul getting in the ring boxing because they need that battle that challenge and that's the nature of a real man and the fact that it can be very lucrative i mean jake paul and logan paul at ksi youtubers have started off you know youtubing and now they're making millions fighting calling out conor mcgregor so it gets back to my my original one of my original points that i wanted to cover 
blah, blah. <laughs> He's so short-sighted, so narrow-minded. You know, he's, and he's so unbusiness minded yeah, that I can see the benefit of challenging people, yeah? Challenge, you know, Vegan Gains challenged him. I challenged him, yeah, to an MMA fight, boxing, anything. Let's do it, you know? But he's so dumb, so narrow-minded, that he can't see what it would do. He can't see the benefits of it. You know, no one gets killed in a ring. You know, there's so many safety precautions taken. So much health and safety involved. No one gets killed. No one gets maimed. No, you know, and it's only after repeated, repeated head traumas that you end up getting what they used to call punch drunk, which is, you know, traumatic brain injury and all that stuff. But they're professional fighters who've been clouted around the head many, 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 many times. Yeah. But having the odd fight here and there and maybe having a head shield, a head guard on and big gloves... You're not going to get brain damage. You're not going to get injured. You're not going to die. Yeah. But what you will get is your channel blowing up. Yeah. And then a little bit of fame from that and some money from that as well. But Mr. Blah Blah is too dumb and too cowardly to see it and do it. So it really does, you know, we've had years of him saying he was a mercenary and he gets into bar fights and he's Slovak, you know, Slovak or something, you know, he's Slav, you know, that's where his name, blah, blah, you know, that's where his name comes from, yeah. He tried to say he was Czech and he was fighting men, he's Texan, he's a badass. And, oh. <laughs> he's none of those things. Because if he was, firstly, he'd leave his, his shitty apartment, yeah? And he's terrified to do that. <laughs> he just, even gets his food delivered, apparently. Uh, and secondly, he'd get in a ring. He reckons he's got a martial art, I, I got a martial art background, I did American Taekwondo, or some crap that he said, yeah? He reckons he got, you know, he did a little bit of something in, you know, when he was young. If we're to believe that, then you know you've dipped your toe in the water. You know what it feels like to train on a mat. Get in the ring. Let people film it. Win or lose, you're going to come out smiling. Your, your channel's going to blow up. You're going to make some extra money off the back of it. YouTube revenue, shekels. Yeah. Have some balls, get in the ring. Jake Paul's done it and made a very successful amount of money from it. Logan Paul, KSI. This is what people want to see and they're willing to pay for it. You just have to have not even big balls, just medium-sized balls to get in the ring because there's no harm. You're going to have to train. Someone's going to win, someone's going to lose, unless it's Mike Tyson and uh, Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> it's a draw. But, you know, someone's going to win, someone's going to lose, and that's life. You can't win everything. Where would you put it all <laughs> if you won everything? You know? That's a lemmy line. <sighs> so just, you don't even have... Massive ball, you just need medium-sized balls. A little bit of courage. And if you've had a martial art experience, or background when you're young, then you know what it's like to spar. Get in the ring. Let people film it. Put it on YouTube. Put it on Rumble, which is better than SoyTube. But get in the ring. Show everyone that there's something, even if it is tiny, there's something in those tight black women's shorts that you wear. Just get in the ring. I'm coming to Texas next year. I guarantee it. When all this crap's over, I'm coming to Texas. Because we've got family in Texas. 
So I'm going to Texas. And we could do this if there was anything in those little tight black panties. Like I say, they don't have to be massive. It just need to be medium size to get in a ring. So the challenge is still there. It's the only way you're going to get any interest back in your channel. No one cares about seeing some old bloke messing about in his bedroom in shorts. No one wants to see that. The views tell you that. Maximum 2,000 a video. 2%. 1.9% of your alleged subscriber count watch that rubbish. But they will watch you and me sparring in a ring. So let's do it. Grow some. Grow a pair. Even a little pair. Because those shorts are so tight, we can see there's not much in there. But grow just a little pair. I'm going to be in Texas next year. I would like to train with you in a ring or on a mat. It doesn't matter. Just put on some gloves, have a little spa. Yeah? Let's do it. Grow a pair. Let me put the nail in this coffin real tight. God hates a coward. God hates a coward. 21 and 8 says, but the cowardly and the unbelievers, murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which is the second death. God wrote that I didn't. Who leads the list of that ragtag mob? The cowardly.